Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a paintbrush effect both on paper and then to vectorize it as well on Illustrator. Now this doesn't require you to use the uh, pen tool on Illustrator which is obviously much better for some of you who aren't really that experienced with it. So with this you're just basically going to be using Live Trace to create the vectorized version but I'll show you the settings that I use to get the best results out of it. So here I've got four brush pens. These three here are pretty much the exact same as each other. Uh, this one's a Pentel Art Brush, GFL, I'm not sure what that is. You can get these in multiple different colours as well. So these three here are actually have they actually have brush fibre tips, so the tip of the pen is actually separate little fibres. So that's the Pentel one. These two are from a brand I'm not really sure how to pronounce and I'm not gonna bother trying because I'll probably butcher it, but these two are pretty much the same, except from this one, which is brush pen number 24, has a more fine and shorter tip. Whereas this one has quite a long tip and this one's number 22. And then the other brush pen that I've got here is the Zebra Feud brush pen. Um, these come in three different sizes. This is the thickest one which I personally prefer most out of all of them. So this effect can be achieved with uh, any, any kind of brush pen really. So these are all brush fibres and this one is just a standard brush pen tip. So with this one, you have to do quite fast quite fast strokes to achieve this kind of paintbrush style of look. Um, and if you've got a brand new one, you will have to do quite fast strokes. But if it started to run out quite a bit like this one has, then it becomes much easier to get this gritty kind of paintbrush look. So like I said, you can use any brush pen. I mean, just try them out and see which ones create this kind of effect. But these are just ones that I personally recommend. So I'll just first start off by using the Zebra Feud brush pen. And as you'll be able to see, I'll be doing the letters quite quick to try and achieve this like gritty sort of paintbrush style. So I'm just gonna write the word brushed. So as you can see, it's very like gritty and rough, like a brush, like an actual paintbrush would look, say if you dipped it in and just did a quick piece of type. So that's the Zebra Feud brush pen. So now I'm going to use one of the actual brush fiber brush pens and of course this is going to give you a bit of a more realistic kind of brush look since it actually is a brush. Um, but bear in mind with these you have to squeeze the pen to get the ink to come through. So if you've only just squoze, squoze it to get the ink to come through then the lines that you get will be quite dark and quite thick. So you have to use it a fair bit to get it to the point where it's quite gritty and like spacey like this. So once again I'll just write the word brush with this. So as you can see, I've only just actually squoze this, so all the lines are pretty much like full, fully, fully filled in, rather than having like stroke lines in them like this. So just quickly do that. I mean, this is a nice style as well to have. So I was being very light on the tip there, but if you if you push down quite a bit, you'll get more of an actual sort of. A real more realistic actual brush stroke like a thick brush stroke so I'll just give you an example of that now so I'll push down quite a bit more and as you can see that is more like an actual brush kind of style so that's the thin tip and then the thick tips are pretty much just the exact same obviously just a bit thicker so I'll just do the exact same here push down heavy as you can see that one's running out a bit so it's quite difficult to see I mean if you want like a really like empty kind of style like that then by all means go for it but I'm just gonna squeeze the ink through a little bit just to give it a bit of a darker line oh and a bit more of a fill I think because I've just squoze this through now it's probably going to be quite um, filled in yeah like that but th even this is a nice style you don't it doesn't have to be completely gritty and empty so that's how you create that style on paper so I'm just gonna turn it over and just write something really quick and then or put it into Illustrator and create the vector version. So I'll write the word brush with the thin uh, brush pen. So write the word brush. So I'll do one in that vert in that pen, and then I'll do one with the zebra pen, and I'll make them both vectors so you can get an idea of the kind of difference in the styles that you get. Okay, so now we have our two pieces of type and I'm now going to put this into Illustrator. I'm just going to scan this in first and then put it into Illustrator and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so once you have your lettering work scanned in, 
or if you haven't if you've not got a scanner then you can simply take a picture of it but i do recommend you use a scanner because you'll get more of the details like really close up so from here all i'm going to do is select the image once it's in illustrator and you can see at the top it says image trace so i'm not going to click image trace i'm going to hit the little arrow next to it where it says tracing presets and i'm going to come down to silhouette and just press ok if that comes up Right, so as you can see, it doesn't look particularly great at the minute. It's very rough. So from here, I'm just gonna hit this box up here that should be at the top on the image trace tab. So I'm just gonna hit that. This will open up. And by default, it will already say in the options section, ignore white, which means once you expand it, all of this white background will just be gone. It won't be part of the object. It will just simply be the black shapes, which is definitely very useful. So. If the advanced tab isn't open, just click the little arrow here and it will drop down. And first thing I'm going to do is put the path, paths, sorry, near the top. So maybe about 94, 95. And if you put it right to the very top, you'll notice that all the edges of your like words will be very rough and sharp, which isn't really ideal. I mean, if you want, if you want to go for that, then by all means go for it. But I'm just going to show you how I do it. So corners, put that at the top, and noise, put that at the bottom. And as you can see, now it's starting to gain a bit more shape and you can start to see the brush style a bit more in it. So what we can do from here is bring the threshold down, which means the white parts will start to come through a bit more. So I'm going to bring this down to about 204, see how that looks. Right, so that's starting to look quite, quite a bit better. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, get a bit of a close up on the details. And I think I'm just going to play around with the paths and see how that changes it. So I think we'll bring the paths back up, corners we'll bring that down a little bit to make it a bit smoother. It's not really, but yeah, it is making a difference, right, pull that out there. Threshold, let's move this up again, see how that looks. So it really depends on the actual style of type that you're working on, so as you can see with this one, the threshold's better being high up, so you can actually get a better idea of, you see you actually see more of the detail in the type, I'll just bring that down a little bit. So yeah, you're not going to get this, you're not going to have specific settings for specific styles, it completely depends on your actual lettering itself. So this is just how I usually start off, I usually put both of these at 100 and put this at 1. And then I just start to slowly adjust them to see what works and what doesn't work. So paths, move this down a bit more. That's better, that's looking much better now, it's got rid of the bumpy edges on it, so it's not like really jagged. So let's see how that looks, that looks good. And what I might do is just expand this now. So close that off, hit expand. And if you've got little excess parts like this that you don't want, all you're gonna have to do is make sure you select it like this so it selects everything. Right click, ungroup. And then if you've got parts, say like, if you tried to highlight, I mean, I can highlight all this because it's not gonna select any of this. But say if you've got other type that comes down here and it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to select all, all these small little individual pieces like this. What you can do is just get the lasso tool and just draw around the type that you actually want to use. You want to keep in a group, so don't want that piece. Just do that and it will select that area and you can just right click group and then you have that as a group. So that's the first piece and I think now I'm just going to copy this and paste it into a new layer. So, so that's there. I'm going to turn this one off and then I'm going to get a new layer. Drag this in again. And I'm going to focus on the top style this time rather than the bottom one. And like I said before, they'll probably require different settings since they come the different kind of styles. Like this one's very like gritty and you can see straight through it pretty much and this one's fairly dark. So I'm just going to go to image trace again, silhouettes. Okay, and hit the box up here again, image trace panel. And again, paths pretty much at the top, corners pretty much at the top, and then noise at the bottom, which allows you to see all the smaller details. All right, zoom in, and then we're gonna play with the threshold again. See what we can get to work. And what I'm focusing on here is primarily the letter U, since that's where the, um, the gaps are in the lettering. So this would ideally be the best letter to look at to get as much detail as you can in the type. OK, 
Okay, so I'll bring that back up a little bit. Just want to keep all the little details in there. Corners, bring that down. Um, let's try the threshold lower. Uh, bring that up a little bit. So yeah, that's starting to look a bit more like gritty, more like a brush. So again, close the image trace panel, hit expand. I'm just gonna get the lasso tool again. Sorry, nope, we need to ungroup everything first. Right click, ungroup, get the lasso tool. And I'm just gonna draw, oops, draw around the, um, the lettering that I actually want to use, which is this. And then click on the selection tool, right click, group. I'm just gonna copy that with Command C, turn this layer off, put it at the bottom, create a new layer, paste it with Command F. So, as you can see, now you've got your two fairly similar, but in their own way different brush styles, like um, paintbrush kind of style lettering, which can work for quite a lot of things. I mean, I've actually had clients come to me for um, logos in this style, which is quite interesting because it doesn't necessarily work for everything, but it depends, of, of course, what the brand wants and what the brand's about. So if it's like more of like a street sort of urban kind of style brand, then this obviously works quite well. So just to give you an example of what we've done. Right, so as you can see, this is where we focused on the top version and look how the bottom version looks. It's very, you can hardly even see it. So this is just proof that you do, uh, it does require different styles for different pieces of type. Yeah, and as you can see, this is quite different to this. This one looks more gritty and more like a paintbrush. That one looks very filled in in, in a lot of places. Like look at the U, for example, like here. Then you look at it on this one you get more of the detail so it is more it's just about experimenting with the settings and seeing what works best with your type so i hope this tutorial has helped you guys um of course as always if you if you've got any suggestions for other tutorials that you want to see you want me to do feel free to leave it in the comments down below and i'll try and get around to doing it as soon as i can thank you so much for watching guys